again, um, we're on the main trail now, and we're on the west end of the island, not quite to the tickle. But I stopped here because I want to speak about ferns. And this is a great place for them. As you can see in back of me, the, the trail literally is getting covered with ferns, but we stopped here. Most of the time when people see ferns, um, probably from childhood, we make a connection with dinosaurs because they look that way. In fact, I was here walking on here with two other people and the one person turned to me and said, gee, it's just like Jurassic Park. And we have that mental image of ferns and dinosaurs and reptiles and stuff like that. The more interesting thing is, is these plants were here hundreds of millions of years before the dinosaurs, before reptiles, even before amphibians. If we go back in Earth's history, um, the fern is one of the earliest plants that we would recognize, say, as a plant. Um, early on, these were tree-like. Um, even today, there are some species uh, that are 10 meters high. You know, so you're looking at a tree kind of like this conifer right here. These ferns would be like that. They weren't even here. And you have this. Now, the thing is, there is about you know, 11,000 species of fern worldwide. That's, you know, that's amazing. They're all different sizes, shapes. Um, when you look at some of these leaves here, such as this, this plant here, these are called fronds. This is one leaf. These are not the leaves. This is a compound leaf, and these would be the leaflets. And then you have more on each leaflet. Very complicated for a primitive plant. They're vascular, they're like everything else here. They soak up water, they, they do transpiration and get rid of oxygen. Very, but these were the first, even though primitive, they were the first of what we would call the modern plant. Now, according to the fossil record, um, these ferns of all sorts have been around anywhere between, well, upwards between 400 and 450 million years ago. Um, life, life in its most minute form started maybe 550 to 600 million years ago. So in geologic term, this is just a skip. To have a plant that looks like that, that's, that's incredible. And to see them today, I, 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 to me it's a joy. Um, when I look at the mosses down here, the club mosses, all of these plants, have been around for hundreds of millions of years. They have faced mass extinctions. The Permian extinction, which followed the Carboniferous, say about 290 million years ago or so, wiped out 95% of all life. But not these guys, not the mosses, not the club mosses, not the horsetails. They were different than what they are now, but these guys have survived. They are, in the plant world, you'd almost have to say that these are the pigeons, the seagulls, the crows. Um, throw whatever you got at them. They can handle it. A, a maple tree? Weak by design. Even the conifers, that whole boreal forest that we look at, Canada's strength, the north, Compared to these guys, nothing. Uh, this tree here, it could go. You know, it's a fir. Yeah, good for Christmas. The ferns, though, <sighs> unbelievable. Now, I'm passionate for them. That's why I sound this way. Again, vascular, 
And like the club mosses, like the horsetails, they have spores. Now what happens with these guys is the spores, and I'll get out of the sunlight, the spores actually occur on the bottom of the leaflets. And if you look at them, uh, not seeing any right here, but if you look at these things, they just show up as little brown dots. Uh, you probably look at them and go, oh, there's something wrong with the plant, it has a disease. No, it's reproducing. Sometimes sex looks like a disease. Um, and the whole idea is wind will come along, blow them, rain will hit them, knock them down, and they keep reproducing. One here, one here, one over there, one down there. They're all over the place. They like the shadows, even though they're in the sun, they'll tolerate it, they have to do photosynthesis. But they like the shadows, they like the cool, the damp. That's why I think they're mostly on this end of the island. I think the east end of the island is, is drier. This is more wet down here, and as you can see behind me, look at the ferns on both sides, and they go all the way down. And they're in the woods as well. <laughs> so these are the whole things here. And one of the things I just want to point out to people is that a lot of people either have seen in the woods or even have in their gardens a cinnamon fern. And of course it looks like this except for that brown stick that comes up that looks just like cinnamon. That particular species, that plant that may be in your backyard, is known from fossils 65 million years ago. That one species was there when the dinosaurs went extinct. And it is still with us. That's evolution, that's survival, that's power, that's strength, that's determination. These guys are survivors. And what's going to happen with climate change? How will it affect these and the mosses and the club mosses and the horsetails? They've seen this already for millions of years. Up and down, you want it cold, you got it. You want it hot, you got it. You want it wet, dry, you got it. They're here. Angiosperms like maple trees, apple trees, stuff like that, roses, they're more fragile. They're not gonna, you get a glacier, they're all gone. You get, they, they don't live in the tropics. They need temperate zones. When this becomes a warm temperate zone on this island and around it, we're gonna lose species. I'm not gonna be here, but I'd love to come back in about a couple hundred years and see the descendants of these plants. I guarantee you, they'll be here next time.